You're listening to Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official podcast of Lingerie Fighting Championships. And now, here's your host, Michael Lutkin! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another edition of Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official LFC Lingerie Fighting Championships podcast. My name is Mike Larkin, and folks, if you have not checked out LFC 38 Angels and Little Devils, it is like Joey Lawrence on Blossom back in the 90s. Whoa! Because we had so many great matches of epic proportions and so many great matches involving a little bit of MMA, a little bit of wrestling, and a little bit of cosplay, and this one is no different. We had the Battle of the Undefeated Streaks. We had the Battle of the Italians. And one of them, somebody had to lose. Somebody had to win. But other than that, we got a damn good contest. Lauren Ceccarelli, you are back. The Adventurous, amazing bout with Angelica, the Italian knockout Cole. How you doing tonight? I'm doing okay. Uh, my ribs hurt. But other than that, I'm fine. <laughs> Fair enough. But first and foremost, I will say this, folks. One of my favorite bouts of the night, Lauren Ceccarelli, Angelica, the Italian knockout Cole. This was a 180 because I got to say this first and foremost to you. You came in back at LFC 35 rocking the witch's costume, having fun doing your thing thing. And then this time, holy hell, total 180, man. We got the boots. You got the jacket looking good as always. But first and foremost, love the attitude shift, man. Thank you. Yeah, I just was feeling very confident in myself and so i don't know maybe i got a little too cocky <laughs> i will say this when we did see you do also put out a video you didn't care who you faced going into this event you faced an italian knockout in angelica cole who also made her debut at lfc 36 booty camp four uh, against andre the sidewinder shakti and now two and oh let's put this out here first what was it like number one going against someone like in a woman like angelica the italian knockout cole because the size differential was there and the overall stature but i think you two mesh like a hand in glove what was that about going into it this time knowing that you're going against a fellow undefeated streak um Honestly, it was pretty uh, intimidating. I mean, it was intimidating going against Veronica Payne, Veronica Payne because she's a wrestling vet herself. But, like, knowing I'm going against, like, an Italian boxer, like, that was really uh, that was, that was really intimidating. But uh, I tried to act tough so and tried to, like, not let her intimidate me. But, unfortunately, did not work. <laughs> I will say this, though. Things that did work, man. You worked over the knee. You worked over the leg like your Brett the Hitman heart taking on Mr. Perfect back at SummerSlam 91. First of all, love the psychology and everything that went into this bout. Because before we even got to the belt, I felt like you were about to slap Katia Cortez. I was the ring announcer. She called you Cesarelli instead of Ceccarelli. You were not playing again this time going around into this bout. Man, I love the fact that you also worked over the leg, worked over the knee. I thought we were going to get a slight figure four into the post type of vibes in that matchup. But hey, man, you didn't even, she didn't even shake your hand at the beginning. She just put her hands right behind her back. What the hell? I know, right? I want, like, first of all, like, this is why I was in a mood, okay? The announcer mispronounces my name. She doesn't shake my hand. Like, and I'm the bad guy. Like, come on. Come on. There was some sass from both of you, and here's what I got to say about this. I, I think with her, and when it comes to Angelica, she's always about the power game, the strikes, the kicks, what have you. You were just like, all right, I'm going to find a limb. I'm going to take her down. I know where this is going, so I'm going to focus on it. There was one point in the matchup where Leon Hader, her coach, much like a la Rocky IV, throw the damn towel. We almost had a, like, Bob Backlund, Grand Wizard, Arlen Skull, and Iron Sheep back in MSG back in the 80s. She threw the towel away because she wasn't going to give up. You had her. I, I'll be honest. I thought you had her. I thought I had her, too. You know, I my strategy going in, it's like, okay, I need to take her off her feet because she's a boxer. So she's going to do really well on her feet. But, you know, as boxers do, you know, she wasn't going to give up. Like, I thought I had it. I thought I had it. I thought I was going to be undefeated. I thought I was going to be 2-0. Oh, but no. Look at it like this. You didn't give up. You didn't submit. But a doggone overhand right and a shot to the ribs took you down and unfortunately you cannot continue but i'm going to say this right now looking at you and your pedigree thus far in lfc i gotta say two memorable bouts two amazing bouts i think you have become one of the fan favorites here in lingerie fighting championship so there's a plus a silver lining 
on everything that went down though. That is true. Yes. I did have a lot of fun, all things considered. And I think that's what it's about when it comes to LFC is that fun game. And first and foremost, can we talk about the attire? Can we talk about the lingerie? Because you go from being a witch at LFC 35 and then this menace, just overall, just everything from the boots and everything. I got to say lingerie was on point once more. Thank you. Yeah. I wanted to switch it up, you know, try something different. Uh, purple is my favorite color. And I was on the red team this time, so I wanted to do a color that would coordinate with the red gloves. And um, purple seemed to be, like, of the lingerie that I already had, purple seemed to be the best choice. Um, but, yeah, I, I really liked it. Uh, and I just, yeah, I was just feeling my reputation moment, you know. <laughs> I think you felt it. And I'm going to ask you this going into, again, this being your second bout in LFC. And first of all, once more, welcome back. And it's great to see you back. But also at the same time, man, when it comes to you, Miss Adventurous, how is it feeling this time coming back, not only just for the opponent wise and just an amazing car with LFC 38, but how does this time feel much different than what we had back at LFC 35? Because we talk about 180, whole new woman. But I got to say, you've really come a long way since that belt. How did it feel this time knowing, okay, I'm back at LFC. We're back at the FSW Arena. Familiar stomping grounds, but a new attitude and an overall new form of swag, which is what LFC is, swag and stature. Um, I felt a lot more confident this time. Like, I knew what I was doing a little more because it was my second bout. And also, I had been wrestling on the indies a lot more. So I was more familiar with wrestling in front of a crowd and how that was going to be. Um. So I definitely felt a lot more confident in myself as a wrestler and fighter. Um, and I definitely felt like I was more able to handle the situation <laughs> than last time. Last time it was like, this is my first ever live match. So <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I think let's go indeed. And I'm going to put it like this. And I mentioned it earlier, briefing into the whole bout here. But Katia Cortez, God bless her, with the Australian accent, Playmate, Playmate of the Year, FHM. We saw her back at LFC 37.5, the FHM bootleg. Did an amazing job. But Cesarelli, you were not having that, man. I was ready for a throwdown. I was ready for just a backhand, man. You were not happy with the Cesarelli botch of the name. I like screamed at her and I was like, I felt bad afterwards because she looked like so like embarrassed. And I was like, oh, no, it's just it's just the attitude. I don't take it personally, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does fit. And I will say this. Shout out to Katia for doing what she's doing with the LFC Goddess Among Us series coming up. But but yeah, I noticed that. I'm just like, OK, poor Katia Cortez. She just comes right in with her Australian self looking good in her own right, because I got to say her attire was on point. But yeah, I was ready. The best less line, folks. Go back and watch it. LFC 38. It's Checarelli. Get it right. And then you had a little swag to it. You put the hand like this. The hair was going like Tawny Katane in a White Snake video. Oh, my goodness. Yo, go back and watch that moment because you were not having that. But I like the two. I like the two. The repping the two. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, this event also featured a great idea of just going into the cosplay side of things. And we mentioned your attire from LFC 35. How at home did you also fit knowing that you're returning? And in this aspect, we'll touch upon that it's a cosplaying event. And well, ma'am, from your adventurous gimmick and just your overall style and your overall aesthetic and your overall gear and attire and outfit coordination. How awesome did that feel that it was also a cosplaying event where we saw Harley Quinn's, we saw Barbies, and we saw so many different lingeries being applied in the cosplay world. I thought that was super cool. Um, I wanted to cosplay myself, but I couldn't really put anything together in time. Um, but yeah, it was really cool seeing like a little domestic violence with the uh, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. And then it was cool seeing Catwoman. And yeah, there was a lot of really uh, fun cosplay going on. And I was really, I, I, there was a lot of fun. Absolutely. And that's what it's about at the end of the day. Fun, fun and entertainment. And that's what you get with LFC. And also what we get as well within the world of professional wrestling, because this one over here, Wild West Championship Wrestling Women's Champion, saw the photo, saw the attire, saw the footage. Congratulations, man. Thank you. 
I got to ask you first and foremost as well. I mean, we've seen a lot of women from Jin Savani being in there as well. There's another one I've seen as well for fellow FSW Arena participant. I saw her in there with Brittany Brooks and a lot of great talents at the FSW Arena. She's another one taking over the NDC. And I wanted to ask you going in and becoming another women's champion, another great promotion. How does that make you feel being at the top of the echelon, being the top of the brand, and really supporting and representing women's wrestling and wrestling as a whole, being a dominant champion? Um, I, it's a lot of pressure, but, um, I really like that I've been given this opportunity by the promotion to be able to show that I can, I do have a skill and that I do have a lot to offer, um, when it comes to wrestling and competing and fighting, um, and just showing character and, um, telling compelling stories. <laughs> Beautifully and eloquently said, and I will say this about you, and if you've not checked out this social media presence, and I mean that in the utmost sincerity and respect, the social media presence that is Laura Frazier, a.k.a. Lauren the Adventurous Ceccarelli under the LFC auspices, very outspoken, very blunt, you know what you want and you know your worth, and like you mentioned there, to go back to that point, compelling storytelling, much like we saw with your bout with Angelica, you know what you want, man, and I can respect that. I think you're going to do a lot of great movements and a lot of waves, so to speak, when it comes to wrestling as a whole, so I got to give you kudos on that front thank you i hope so <laughs> no, I, I do and i mean it's funny because we've touched upon this before but social media for anybody it can be good it can be bad it can be different whatever you but it's out there and it's a helper way to promote ourselves and just really showcase our overall brand i think sometimes a lot of people say bluntness and honesty can really backfire but at the same time i love the fact that you put yourself at the forefront and this goes with any professional wrestler in general Anything in professional wrestling is worth fighting for and standing up for, but it's up to us to make that change and make that evolvement. So I think it's an overall foundation aspect, and I think your foundation is proven to see where you are now because I got to say, proud of the work that you've been doing these last three years, and it's really going to show continuing going forward into fruition. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad that you've been seeing that, and I'm glad that more and more people are starting to see that too. Um, it really has been making me feel like the work I've put in is worth it. Agreed. And West Coast, West Side, if you're not checked her out for Full Queer, Hood Slam, now Wild, my goodness, Wild West Championship Wrestling Women's Championship, collecting belts, collecting hearts, and just doing everything that you can to show a compelling character. But not only that, I got to put this out here because I saw you post on social media and learning the fundamentals and really taking it, absorbing knowledge from veterans. Got to give a shout out to Mansoor, the former Moss Say in WWE, seminar going down, Bay Hey B, what a mind he is, right? Yeah, yeah, he uh, trained at Stoner U as well uh, with the twins. And yeah, I learned so much from him. Like he was able to frame things in a way that like made sense because like I have a pretty extensive acting background. So when it comes to like theater and stuff, he framed stuff in a way that made sense for me and my background. And like, yeah, it just, it just, there was a lot of stuff that like people kept harping on me about. And I was like, okay, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not sure how to like, I'm not sure what you're saying or how to apply it. And he framed it in a way that made sense to me. And I really appreciated that. I think you have to have that mindset, and especially with a guy like him. I look at the Maximil models for they were. It was kind of like the modern day, like the model Rick Martel, like we saw with the arrogance back in the 90s. And you have these guys who were just, they took a character, one from Retribution, then one who was just like, okay, here's the guy from Saudi Arabia. They're going over here doing this matchup, and it's a doggone good match. But he's really developed a character in his own right. And I mean, the wrestling foundation is there. The character foundation is there. I think to always have that adaption and the tools to it, it's your golden man. So I think... I think that's a great teacher to learn from and Mr. Munsor. Most definitely. And I got to say, speaking of learning and adapting, you learned and adapting to the LFC way because, folks, if you've not checked out LFC Exposed, and I'm talking about the reality show on the LFC website, the VIP section, if you will, to quote the late great American dream, this one over here, we are up to the LFC 35 lead up, the behind the scenes, if you will. And, well, pizza horror movies, wine, y'all be crashing some parties, and we are supposed to have the pink team, Joel Kane running some movies, and you said, hey, where's our invite? We up in there like swimwear. Let's talk about it, man. I mean, I thought we were invited, but I guess I uh, I, I, mis I misinterpreted what the invite was. Um, yeah, I guess we weren't invited. I guess the invite was bogus. I'm not even sure. I don't even know what happened. 
Well, let's put it like this. When you advertise Aparte, Mr. Joel Kane, do not put it on Fet Life, where we see a lot of great talent go out there on the Fet Life. What are you doing? Hey, I got pizza. I got bad horror movies. I got wine. But let me put it on the Fet Life, not on Facebook, but the Fet Life. Completely different or completely different social medias, if you will. I can't even talk because I can't believe I'm flabbergasted that Joel Gain will go out there and put it on Fet Life, but he did. And well, ain't no party like an LFC party like an LFC party don't stop. And I got to say, first and foremost, you see laughter, you see enjoyment, you just see a whole lot of people cutting it up in one hotel room. And who doesn't love some pizza, baby? I got to say, first and foremost, we'll ask from the reality side of things. This LFC Exposed brings you the finest behind the scenes action right in front of your camera like we're doing here, folks. What was it like not only being a part of LFC, but you're being a part of the Exposed series, being interviewed behind the scenes, really us getting to know what you're about and God dang it, what the events lead into an amazing event like LFC 35 was um it was definitely uh interesting i've never done like reality tv before so uh it was definitely a new experience and um yeah i i really wasn't sure what to expect so i just showed up it just went went along with the ride <laughs> I think that's all you can do really in this world is really go along with the ride and whatever endeavor that you are. And I will say this, I mean, you and I being the nineties babies that we are from the reality side of things, we great, we grew up with the VH1 celeb realities from the flavor loves, the rock of loves and the I live monies. So we know about that reality life. Sometimes reality TV can be crazy, but at the end of the day, it's entertainment. And I'm going to say thus far within the series and episode one, folks, you will see some entertainment. You will see some laughters from this one. You will see some laughters from Bella Madison and Sheena and Veronica Valentine, baby. Oh, I got to say, go out of your way and watch the first episode of LAC Exposed. We are in season 13, and what a season it's going to be. And I got to say, I cannot wait to see where we are coming from you, women's champ, LFC extraordinaire, and what we have, man. So I've got to put this first and foremost here. Let's get it back for you a third time, and let's see who you would you want to face next, because the sky's the limit. We just had LFC 39 at Secrets Hideaway in Kissimmee, Florida. We had Bella Madison and Sheena in the rematch. We had the debut of Avery Ryder. We had the debut of Tracy Nix, who has been on AEW and Shine Wrestling as well in the Florida area. Who are you looking at next, man? Who are you looking towards? Definitely, um, definitely either Bella Mad Madison or Sheena. Um, I know Sheena would be quite the challenge, but I feel like I need to like really prove myself. Um, and I, those two are really tough competitors. Uh, so I think I would be able to really, you know, I really need to like have a good comeback and to defeat someone who's like such a strong competitor. Uh, those two would probably be two of the top options. Okay, first and foremost, I had, number one, love the courage, number one. Not only that, just admire and love the courage. And number two, you're ready to cut, like, the tree down, man. It's like Jack climbing the dog on Beanstalk, and you're ready to just rip ass and tear him down. I like your style. Now, all right, Sheet of Hungarian Bathory, let, let's analyze, dissect, and decipher this here. Power slap champion over here, just out here molly whopping people, the science of slapping people in the face. I got to say. I think you two would have a great matchup because she's got the Hurricane Rana. She's got the strength. She's got the size, the speed, and the agility. Much to you and your own right, ma'am, of cutting them down the tree like we saw with Angelica. But, man, that slap. I mean, we've seen the slap, but power slap footage from her. You got to watch out for that slap. Yeah, but I'm fast, so I can dodge it. Okay, fair enough. All right, Roadrunner. So we'll go on to the Bella Madison side of things here. Um, Bella Madison, we've seen her against Machine in the Hungarian Bathory, as we just had the third time. She just came off about with, first of all, Riley Jade smoking out there, not only from the internal and external beauty, rocking the Sailor Moon out there. Hello. And then she just got into that bout with Bella Madison. She hit her over the head with the glass. Now the referee didn't see it. Leon took a bump. And now here you are, right, and getting there in Bella Madison, who has really showed up and showed out in her own right. The name change, Lauren, from the Bella Rebel Rebel Princess Madison. Now she's the goddess of chaos, and I think you want to reign some chaos with some Bella Madison. I'm all about the chaos. I love chaos. I thrive in chaos. My room, I will not show you, is chaos. So, you know, I got into pro wrestling because chaos. So I'm all about this goddess of chaos. Let's go. Can I just say, I think you're ready to bounce in the mosh pit, throw your hands up. You're just ready to keep rolling, 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 rolling. What with what you're doing, man? Yes. Ready um, to break some stuff. It's just one of those days. Yes. 
<laughs> okay, sidebar here. First and foremost, early Limp Biscuit, folks, is what we're talking about. And I know people be like, okay, that's 20-something plus years old. But let me tell you something, folks. There's not a lot of things in this day and age that are timeless. And let me tell you something. Limp Biscuit with Fred Durst's backwards red hat. Yeah, he had a red hat and a red hat and it was backwards. What's the shit? All you need is Aaron Lewis with his pierced eyebrow and just start singing outside and you're there. It's family values, people. It's family values. You family know values, definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Woodstock 99, that was family values right there. Jesus. Fucking, now you just put the image of Carson Daly getting freaking mud thrown at his freaking face on TRL. Oh, my God. Not the worst thing that happened at that event. Oh, this one over here. All right. Freaking fire and mud. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fire and mud, baby. I love it. Uh, okay, now, see, there's an entrance right there. You want to talk about chaos? Just friggin'. Well, well all right. Well, we've seen Shay Lynn with the fire and, and her little, like, pyro stuff that she does. That's cool. But now what we need is, like, mud. If we could find somewhere to, like, get mud and like that. Okay. Now, mud can be also very memorable. It's, like, oil, very essential, but at the same time, very dirty and in the mud, so to speak. So there's many different ways you can market and strategize that. So now you got to find a way to do, like, mud and mosh pit since you're, since you're about the chaos life. And you don't need, like, a mosh pit. Sort of kind of like Shotzi Blackheart, but not really. But something like that equates to that, you know? Yeah, she also trained at Stoner U, so yes, how a Stoner U femmes roll. <laughs> I got to say another one. I got to say, first and foremost, I think the first time I ever saw her was Impact, and she also did Rise at that time, right? Like, poor Shotzi, I know she's unfortunately just down with an injury right now, but another one, man, it just really, really has come into her own over the years and really showed up and showed out, right? Yeah, definitely. She's someone who knows who she is and has no shame in it and is just happy with herself and is just not afraid to just be herself and be out there and do her thing. And it's awesome. And I hope she never stops. And I hope uh, she makes a speedy recovery. <laughs> Same. And I got to say this, Miss Fire and Mud over here. If you've not checked out Stoner U, check out the Adventurous over here. She's got friggin' Roundhouse Kick. She's got Slice Bread. She's got Shiranawus like she's now Michi Marafuji up in here. She's got a lot of great maneuvers at her disposal, man. I can't wait to see what else comes more in your repertoire. Thank you. Yeah. Been working on a lot. I'll work on that Slice Bread, I think. <laughs> Well, I mean, S-I-E-D-E-T, Ultimo Dragon style, man. Why not? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's SmackDown, here comes the pain again. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I got to say, folks, if you want to check out some more of Laura, Lauren the Adventurous Ceccarelli, a.k.a. Laura Frazier, up in this piece, check out her bout with Angela, the, Angelica, the Italian knockout Cole, and all of LFC 38 Angels and Little Devils, headlined by Katie the Bombshell Forbes. Great to see Katie back in action against Bella Madison. You can check out Poison Ivy, like Lauren the Adventurous Ceccarelli mentioned, Jenny Bloody Valentine, against the debuting Sarah the Rebel Wolf. Oh, my goodness. Ah, so many great things, so little time. And I got to say, first and foremost, speaking of time, why you punish me like your hoodie and the blowfish, your time, ma'am, is always appreciated. We definitely have to do another round of this and get more LFC action coming in. I can't wait for your next bout. Me too. Uh, Sean said he can't wait to work with me again. So hopefully it won't be another two years before I work with LFC again. Well, good things come to those who wait. And I got to say your return was a gem, much like the debuts of Riley Jade and Sarah Wolf, like we mentioned in today's forum. But I got to say, man, one other final thing I got to mention before we plug, do the social media plugs. You pop me again because we mentioned a little pop culture in today's forum. You put out Bex, I'm a loser baby, so why don't you kill me? After we're putting the social medias on the Instagram front, we're going to talk about this, because don't think I didn't notice this, man, because you know me, you know what's up. We're going to put out some Beck, I'm a loser baby, so why don't you kill me? You pop me with some Beck. Thank you, yeah. Well, I figured it was appropriate since I lost, so... <laughs> Well, all right, appropriate or not, man, Beck is very underrated. And I got to say, folks, again, one of the ultimate <coughs> one of the ultimate 90s jams is Beck. So kudos. Much respect on that front. But yes. Thank sure. you. Thank you. I do like all kinds of 90s rock, so. And well, we'll we'll be touching on that in another form as I'm going to have Lauren on the Pop Culture History Podcast with me. Going to be talking about our girl, Britney Spears, so you can email our hearts. We're born to make you happy. And well... We're about that soda pop, bop, she's end bop. The clock is ticking and we can't stop. Yes, I went there. So I look forward to working more with you, ma'am. And before we close this fun edition of the LFC podcast, as it always is, within your time and your appreciation, where can we follow you on the social media fronts? The floor is yours. 
um, at Lara Fraser Kick on Twitter, <laughs> Twitter X, uh, Instagram, um, TikTok. I don't really post on TikTok. I'm most active on Instagram, second most active on Twitter. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. I'm going to use that now. I don't mean to laugh hysterically, but that was great. Twitter. <laughs> All right. I refuse to call it X, but now I'm going to call it Twitex just because I like your style. I like your combination. Okay. So <laughs> Twitter. Love me a good poor man too. Poor man toe. So. <laughs> there was a fly. I, I heard what you're saying. I dig it. Oh, man. Okay. Laughter and embellishment aside here, check us out, LFCfights.com, where you can see LFC 38 Angels and Little Devils. And you can see this one against Angelica the Italian Knockout Cole working on the leg. Many, many Bret Hart over here just going out there and saying she's the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. I will not shake your hand. I will be like, okay, and I will put my hands behind your back. And you were repping that Mambo Italiano. So rude. The rude. disrespect. The disrespect. Yeah. Okay, now you just put Angelica Cole as the Stephanie Tanner, Jody Sweden of this LFC show. How rude. So you can check out LFC 38 Angels and Little Devils, LFCfights.com. Watch your fight because it's awesome and watch the entire event. Check out LFC Exposed Season 13 going into LFC 35. Pizza, wine, and bad horror movies. Joel has terrible taste in movies, but the pizza made up for it, as well as the wine. And you can check out LFC on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, the whole nine. Well, the links will be in the description. You can check out myself on Twitter, SM Show or MCL92, Larkin underscore 92, and M Larkin on BMB on the Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube, Mike Larkin92. It's appreciated. Check out Laura Fraser Kick on all forms of social media, especially Twitex. I'm going to use it, and it is awesome. And as I say with each and every show, life is an art form where we are all applying our crafts like Laura Frazier. She is doing it in a spectacular fashion. And as always, shows most so much like the like, sort of like the title of the show. Be the strength of dominance. Three key elements to make women the work of art that they are. Laura Frazier. Lauren, the adventurous Checkarelli with your adventurous self. I include you in those sentiments. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Same. See you guys in the next episode. And how rude. <laughs> Now we are looking at a wonderful debut, or the actual, the wonderful return of Lauren the Adventurous. Checkerelli. 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 Checker out indeed. Checkerelli. Checker out indeed. Checker, checker top, checker bottom, checker rally. You know what I'm saying? It's the adventurous, making your way back in. You said five foot eight, hailing from Oakland, California, to take a look at the potato, all the tape. She will have a decided height advantage here. Five foot eight inches tall, she's towering over the knockout artist. But the experience goes on the side of the jug. But uh, yeah. there was a little bit of uh, controversy leading yeah. to this. I guess a criticism of the matchup here of, for the Prez of even allowing this to happen. A 13 0 fighter against a 1 0 fighter. But they are both 1 0 in the LS. That's true. So that's true. You know. The record keeping over in Italy not as deep, so we don't really know how good that 13 0 actually is. So we'll see how it plays out here tonight in Las Vegas. We'll take it up. Katia Cortez. The following battle is scheduled for the three rounds, three minutes per round. Introducing first, into the black corner with a record of 13 wins and no losses. Standing five feet four inches tall and weighing in at 143 pounds, fighting out of Cagliari, Italy. Angelica, the Italian knockout, Cagliari! And her opponent in the red corner, with a record of one win and zero losses. She's a grapple, standing five feet and eight inches tall and weighing in at 145 pounds, fighting out of Oakland, California. Learn the adventurous Cesarelli! What team are you? Blue. Okay. It was great to meet Blue Team with Shaylin and Bella Rockefeller and hang out with them. Um, it was super weird though, because I guess I wasn't, because I thought it was like an open invitation. At least that's what I saw on social. But, um, 
I guess it wasn't like, I guess it was just supposed to be like a small little kickback gathering, but I don't know. I still had fun. <laughs> I'm very much glad I'm not on the pink team. <laughs> I'm sure Kane's a great coach, but um, our personalities would definitely clash. Coach Kane seems very sweet. I'll be honest. When I saw Shay, she looked like somebody who would belong on the pink. It just felt like a natural fit on the pink team. I don't know. I don't think he has the factor I was looking for. Come talk to me. I love the way you're on to me. Looking at you, looking like you're wandering. If we're here for the same reason. For a good time, good time Honey, I'm right here